How do we know the distances and sizes of things in astronomy? This is the first in a series of short videos that will help you understand all the basic concepts. First, notice that distance and size are closely related. This cyclist appears to be getting smaller as he goes into the distance. What's really getting smaller here is his angular size, or how much of the camera's field of view he occupies. His physical size remains constant at about 5 feet tall. There's a simple relationship between physical size, distance, and angular size, which allows astronomers to find any one of those things when the other two are known. So let's look at a side view of that here. We have a person and a camera, and that person is taking up so much of that camera's field of view, we'll call that angle theta. Now let's look at the same person farther away from the camera, and the amount of that field of view that, that person is going to take up when he's farther away is going to be this much, which is much smaller. So this is just a side view of what we were noticing with the cyclist receding from the camera. That when something is, is nearby, appears to be bigger, take up more of the field of view, and when that same thing is far away, takes up less of the field of view. And of course we all know this in our everyday lives. We just don't have to think about it because our brain does it automatically for us. But mathematically, it can be shown that if, well, let's call D, the distance between the camera or the observer and the thing that you're observing, and the angle that it takes up in your camera is theta, and let's say the height of the person is h, we won't usually use h in astronomy, we'll say something like d for diameter or something, but it's uh, to avoid confusion with this d, we'll call it h for now. Now the mathematical relationship is that this angle theta is simply equal to h over d. Okay, so theta is really easy to measure. You just take a picture, you know the field of view of your camera, and you can measure how much of that field of view it takes up. Or even with the naked eye, you can imagine holding a protractor up to the sky to measure that angle theta. So for anything we observe, we can measure theta. The trick is to get either h or d so we can solve this equation to get the other one, whichever one we don't know. And we'll apply that at the end of this video. But first, let's start really close to home by looking at the size of Earth. A Greek named Eratosthenes figured out the size of the Earth over 2,000 years ago. Here's how it worked. He noticed that in a certain city, represented by the purple stick here, at noon on a certain day, the sun was directly overhead such that no shadows were cast. You can see there's no shadow cast by the purple stick here. Now, the same day at noon, in a city farther north, shadows were cast, as you can see by the green stick here. And Eratosthenes figured out that if the Earth is a sphere, the length of the shadow is basically telling you your latitude. Notice that if the green stick were further north, the shadow would be even longer. If we're at the North Pole, the shadow would be infinitely long. So, if you just walk off the distance between the green and the purple cities, you know the distance in miles, and using the length of the shadow, you can tell your latitude in degrees. And since you know there's 360 degrees, to go all the way around the circle, you can just multiply that out to get the total number of miles to go all the way around the circle. And he got 24,000 miles, very close to the modern day value. All right, so now we know the size of the Earth. Let's apply this relationship between distance uh, and physical size and angular size to look at the moon. And the ancient Greeks had also figured this out. And um, so let's say you're looking at a nice full moon, and suddenly there's a lunar eclipse. That is, the Earth moves in front of the moon, between the sun and the moon, and blocks the light. And let's say, uh, so the shadow comes in from this side, say, and uh, it grows and grows. And I'll just take a random point in the middle of the eclipse. The shadow might look like this. So you'll notice the shadow looks like part of a circle. And that circle is just, it's the Earth's shadow, right? But you can't see it all at one time because the Earth is bigger than the moon. But if you made a careful sketch, 
and you just sort of got the relative size of the moon and this part of the shadow down, you could just imagine how big the circle had to be so that you're only seeing that part of it and just extend this arc out to make a complete circle. And you'll find that the size of the Earth's shadow is about three times the size of the moon. So in other words, the size of the Earth is about three times the size of the moon. So the Greeks were able to deduce, uh, because they knew the circumference, therefore the radius of the Earth was 8,000 miles, and uh, that was about three times the radius of the moon. So the modern value for the radius of the moon is around 2,200 miles, so that's very close. Now, knowing the, the uh, physical size of the moon, they were able to apply this formula right here, they easily knew the angular size, and they were able to get out the distance, which is known today to be 238,000 miles. And the Greeks had a relatively accurate uh, idea of that even more than 2,000 years ago. So the next step is to go to the distance and size of the sun, but the Greeks were actually not able to do that for uh, reasons we'll look at next time. This actually had to wait almost 2,000 years before people figured that out. See you next time.